Welcome to part two, balancing redox reactions, employing the half reaction method in acid. Before we begin, it is worth mentioning that the student should have first viewed part one, essential background, to gain more from subsequent sections. The half reaction method in acid at first glance may seem quite complicated. However, the more sample exercises the student completes following this problem solving strategy, the easier this material will become. Okay, so let's get started. The first step is to employ your nomenclature skills to write an unbalanced equation, which of course also includes states of matter. Next, split into an oxidation and reduction half reaction. Then for each half reaction, several steps are required. First, balance the element that is being oxidized or reduced. Then balance the oxygens by adding water, if necessary. Then balance hydrogens by adding protons, if necessary. And finally, balance charges by adding electrons, if necessary. Now, one or both half reactions are ready to be multiplied by an integer to equalize the number of electrons transferred in the two half reactions, so that they cancel. Next, add the half reactions and cancel species that appear on both sides. In other words, simplify followed by checking the charges and atoms balance. These steps will be reviewed and reinforced within subsequent sample exercises. So let's apply these rules to the following redox reaction in acid. First, using our nomenclature knowledge, we write the unbalanced equation from the word problem. Notice I wrote a proton over the arrow to remind myself that we are in acid. Now, Split reactants and products into two half reactions, the reduction and oxidation reaction. Let's apply the next several steps to the reduction half reaction first, then we can tackle the oxidation half reaction. The element being reduced, manganese, is balanced, so let's balance the oxygen atoms by adding the appropriate number of water molecules to the other side of the equation. Now we have to equate the number of hydrogens on both sides of the equation by adding the appropriate number of protons to the other side of the equation. At this point, we calculate what the overall charge is on both sides. The only way to make these charges balance is to add five electrons to the reactant side. Let's repeat these same steps to the oxidation half reaction. The iron atoms are balanced. There are no oxygens, so I do not have to add water molecules or protons to balance which leaves equating the charges by adding one electron to the product side. Before the two half reactions can be added, we need to assure that electrons will cancel, which requires a distribution of five to the oxidation half reaction. Now the two half reactions can be added and the five electrons canceled. Checking charges and numbers of atoms on both sides of the equation indicate the redox reaction is balanced. A slightly easier approach to balancing this redox reaction for the student is as follows. After the half reactions were written, the student can simply grow the equation as shown, which cuts down on all of the rewriting of each step. Again, the element being reduced, manganese, is balanced, so let's balance the oxygen atoms by adding the appropriate number of water molecules. Now we have to tidy the hydrogens up by adding the appropriate number of protons to the other side of the equation. At this point, we calculate what the overall charge is on both sides. The only way to make these charges balance is to add five electrons to the reactant side. Repeating these same steps to the oxidation half reaction, the iron atoms are balanced, there are no oxygen atoms, so I don't have to add water molecules or protons to balance which leaves equating the charges by adding one electron to the product side. Before the two half reactions can be added, we need to ensure that electrons will cancel, which requires a distribution of five to the oxidation half reaction. Now the two half reactions can be added and the five electrons canceled. Checking charges and numbers of atoms on both sides of the equation indicate the redox reaction is balanced. As you can see, having these half reactions grow is a much easier approach than rewriting the equation each time a step is performed. In the next example, we first use our nomenclature knowledge to write the unbalanced equation from the word problem. 
Again, notice I wrote a proton over the arrow to remind myself that we are in an acidic solution. Now, let's split the reactants and products into two half reactions, the reduction and oxidation reactions. Let's apply the next several steps to the reduction half reaction first, then we can tackle the oxidation half reaction. The element being reduced, chromium, needs to be balanced. Now let's balance the oxygen atoms by adding the appropriate number of water molecules to the product side of the equation. Now we have to equate the number of hydrogens on both sides of the equation by adding the appropriate number of protons to the reactant side of the equation. At this point, we calculate what the overall charge is on both sides. The only way to make these charges balance is to add six electrons to the reactant side. Let's repeat these steps to the oxidation half reaction. First, the element being oxidized, carbon, needs to be balanced. Now let's balance the oxygen atoms by adding the appropriate number of water molecules to the reactant side of the equation. Now we have to equate the number of hydrogens on both sides of the equation by adding the appropriate number of protons to the product side of the equation. At this point, we calculate what the overall charge is on both sides. The only way to make these charges balance is to add 12 electrons to the product side. Before the two half reactions can be added, we need to ensure that electrons will cancel, which requires a distribution of two to the reduction half reaction. Now the two half reactions can be added and the 12 electrons will cancel out. In addition, numbers of water molecules and protons can simplify prior to adding both half reactions. Checking charges and numbers of atoms on both sides of the equation indicate the redox reaction is balanced. Again, let's take a look at the simpler way of working the problem by making both sides of the half reactions grow, which is the way all subsequent problems will be solved within this review. First, the element being reduced, chromium, needs to be balanced. Now let's balance the oxygen atoms by adding the appropriate number of water molecules to the product side of the equation. Now we have to equate the number of hydrogens on both sides of the equation by adding the appropriate number of protons to the reactant side of the equation. At this point, we calculate what the overall charge is on both sides. The only way to make these charges balance is to add six electrons to the reactant side. Now let's repeat these same steps to the oxidation half reaction. The element being oxidized, carbon, needs to first be balanced. Now let's balance the oxygen atoms by adding the appropriate number of water molecules to the reactant side of the equation. Now we have to equate the number of hydrogens on both sides of the equation by adding the appropriate number of protons to the product side of the equation. At this point, we calculate what the overall charge is on both sides. The only way to make these charges balance is to add 12 electrons to the product side. Before the two half reactions can be added, we need to ensure that electrons will cancel, which requires multiplying the reduction half reaction by two. Now the two half reactions can be added and the 12 electrons canceled. In addition, numbers of water molecules and protons can simplify prior to adding both half reactions. Checking charges and numbers of atoms on both sides of the equation indicate the redox reaction is balanced. Again, one can see having these half reactions grow is a much easier approach than rewriting the equation each time a step is performed. As we have demonstrated in previous examples, knowing your nomenclature is imperative to begin these exercises. In other words, if you don't know your polyatomic ions, like permanganate here, you can't even get started with these problems. So, as we have demonstrated previously, we first write the unbalanced equation. Again, notice I wrote a proton over the arrow to remind myself that we are in an acidic solution. Next, split reactants and products into two half reactions, the reduction and oxidation reactions. Notice the element being reduced, manganese, is already balanced. Now balance the oxygen atoms by adding the appropriate number of water molecules to the product side of the equation. Now we have to equate the number of hydrogens on both sides of the equation by adding the appropriate number of protons to the reactant side of the equation. At this point, we calculate what the overall charge is on both sides. The only way to make these charges balance is to add five electrons to the reactant side. 
repeating these same steps to the oxidation half reaction. The element being oxidized, bromine, needs to be bounced. There are no oxygen atoms, so it is not necessary to add water molecules or protons to balance, which leaves equating the charges by adding two electrons to the product side. Before the two half reactions can be added, we need to ensure that electrons will cancel, which requires a distribution of two to the reduction half reaction and a distribution of five to the oxidation half reaction due to the fact that 10 is the common multiple for electrons to cancel. Checking charges and numbers of atoms on both sides of the equation indicate the redox reaction is balanced. Undoubtedly, the steps to balance a redox reaction in acid may have appeared rather cumbersome and challenging at the beginning of this review. But after watching several sample exercises be solved here and then solving several more on your own, you should become comfortable with this stepwise problem-solving approach to balance redox reactions in acid.